Welcome back to the Lullabot command line basics series of videos. In this video we're going to be looking at permissions and ownership. And so basically we'll be just looking at a few commands here that can let you modify uh, who's allowed to have access and what kind of access they're allowed to have uh, to, for both files and folders. And we're also going to be looking at a command called sudo which lets you temporarily escalate your, your own privileges so that you can have a little bit more power to make some changes and then go back to being a regular user again. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do here is um, move into my Drupal directory where we've been playing around already. Um, got a bunch of stuff. Uh, I need to get a little more information though so I'm going to actually do an ls-al like we saw in the first video so I can get more details on the files and folders here and this is going to show me permissions and ownership. Remember in the first video we said that the D stands for directory because that's a folder. Uh, if you look up here we have some files that just have dashes at the beginning. First character is not uh, important uh, to what I want to look at. I want to look at these we have three sets of three letters here. Um, those are permissions for the user, these are permissions for the group, and then this last set of three are permissions for everybody else who's not the user or in the group. Um, I'll also point out this little at sign thing here is a Mac thing. Uh, ignore that. It's not something we're going to talk about. Now this column over here, this is listing the user for the file and those are the permissions for the user, that first set of three. This is the group and the group is that second set of three. And then again that last set of three is for everybody else. Now let's look at uh, what these letters actually stand for. So we have R for read, W for write, and X is for execute. Um, that's for the user in this particular one. Um, for the group they have read and execute permissions. Uh, and for everybody else they have read and execute permissions. Now this particular one I'm looking at here is a directory or a folder. And so execute uh, means uh, for that means I can actually go into the folder. I can actually get inside it. On a file, uh, the execute uh, permission means that you can actually run a, like a script is typically where you would see that. So you don't see it on like text files. You tend to see it on files that actually will run things um, and execute something on your system. So you don't tend to see that as often. So again, uh, if we look at the uh, the letters here for the permissions themselves, the user has read, write, and execute permissions on this particular folder. Uh, and the group of staff has only read and execute, so I can't actually write anything there uh, if I was just a member of the group. Alright, so before we actually do stuff to these files and folders, uh, what I'm going to do is what we did in the last video. I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, my stuff folder into something else so that I can just play with it and wreck things and it won't be a big deal so I'll just call this boo. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm doing copy recursive because it's a folder um, and now I have boo is one of my folders. I go into boo and now I have a playground of stuff that I can monkey around with. And the first thing I want to do is uh, go ahead and do that ls-al again uh, so I can get that detailed list of all my permissions. And the particular thing I'm going to be using in this example is this get scripts folder here. Um, so you can see we have uh, the owner is Addy, um, the group is staff, and uh, the owner has read, write, execute, and then the group and other both have read and execute. So, and what I want to do is remove, uh, I don't want other people to be able to do anything. I want to remove the permissions for them. So we're going to use a command called chmod, right? Changing mode. It's not quite as intuitive. But when you use chmod to change permissions, you have, uh, you can use different level letters to indicate which level of ownership it is that you want to change. So U is for user, G is for group, O is for other, or everybody else other, and then A is for all, if you want to change all the permissions at the same time. Uh, you can also group them together, so if I wanted to change both the user and the group permissions at the same time, I could just type both of those letters, um, and that lets Chmod know which ones I want to change. Now in this instance I want to change other, and I want to remove rights, so to remove I'm going to put a minus sign to subtract rights, uh, and then I can tell it what I want to remove, and I want to remove the read and the execute on this. Uh, and then I just put the name of the folder or file that I'm doing this change on. And now when I do ls-al, 
we look at this, you can see that for other, they have no permissions at all now. So they can't, they can't look at it, they can't write anything, and they can't get into the folder. So if I want to change this stuff back, uh, what I'll do is chmod again, O, and this time I want to add permissions rather than subtract, so I'm going to use plus sign, and I'm going to add the read and execute permissions back to this file uh, folder. So there's uh, get scripts, so I do the ls-al, and now when we look at this, uh, you can see that uh, other has the R and the X back on it. One thing I also want to point out right here while we're talking about a folder, I just changed permissions on the folder, and it only changes the folder, it doesn't change anything inside of it. I can use a, a, that dash R that we used in earlier videos to recursively change stuff as well, um, but just keep that in mind, you're just changing the folder. Now I'm going to go into get scripts folder here and we can start playing with these files, uh, just a smaller list uh, to look at and kind of visually keep an eye on. I do want to point out these actually have the execute permission on them and these are individual files that's because these are shell scripts that would execute um, and so if you get a script and it's not working right and it won't fire uh, make sure it has execute permission on it or else it won't actually run the script um, so an important thing to just sort of be aware of uh, when working with files and permissions and so now let's actually look at uh, the, the ownership. We've been looking at the permissions, so the WRX letters, and let's actually look at um, the actual owner and group stuff and how you could change that stuff out. Uh, one important thing I want to point out, uh, so I'm uh, logged in as Addy, uh, and Addy is the owner of these files. And uh, if I want to change ownership to somebody else and then I can do this, uh, but there's also a little bit of oddness involved. So there's this user called root, and that's like your super user, and like in the Drupal world that would be user1. And typically we don't operate in that mode, we're, we're logged in as a regular user. To temporarily move into the root role, you can use this command called sudo. Uh, which means super user do, so do as the super user would. and uh, Many, many systems are set up to use this, uh, but you need to have the proper permissions on your normal user account in order to be able to do this. Um, but So if I want to do something where I temporarily advance my rights uh, so that I can do more stuff, then that's the command I actually need to use. So if I try to do change ownership, which is chown, C-H-O-W-N, if I try to change the ownership of one of these files and give it to root, I want to make the owner actually the root user, um, I can go ahead and type this in, so uh, chone, the name of the user, and the, the file or folder I want to change. And it's telling me it's not permitted. Um, I don't actually have enough permission to give this file to root. So what I need to do is I actually need to temporarily escalate myself by using sudo, and then I can type my regular command after that. So I'll go ahead and type this in. I'm going to change the ownership to root uh, and put the file name and now uh, it's going to prompt me for my password because it wants to make sure I really am allowed to sudo and I can't seem to type my password. There we go. Okay, um, so it basically asked me to authenticate. I did and it went ahead and executed it and so now it changed the owner to root. Now the owner is root. I can't actually, uh, as Addy, can't really do anything to this file now because it's not even owned by me anymore. And you'll see if I if I try to um, do a chmod on this, I want to change the permissions to add write permissions uh, for everybody. So A is for all, and I want to just add write permissions across the board. If I try to do that as the user Addy, as I'm logged in, when I do that, it's going to tell me the operation is not permitted. I don't have permission to do this because it's owned by root. So in order to do anything to this file at this point, I'm going to have to use sudo uh, and temporarily pop myself up. So I'll rerun the command again, but I'm going to put sudo at the beginning, um, and this will go ahead and, and give me right. You notice it didn't prompt me for my password. It's, it already has it for this particular session, so it, it knows that I'm in. So here you can see we've added the right permissions, uh, even though it's still owned by root, because I used sudo. Now that just changed the owner, um, but uh, we also want to look at changing the group, because uh, sometimes the group is important to change too, so it's currently set to staff. 
Um, and I can actually use the chone command to change the group as well. So I'm going to do sudo again, because this is owned by root, so I need that. I'll do chone, and I'm actually going to change the user at the same time. So I'm going to change the user to nobody. So I put that in as, as my main chone, and that's going to replace root. And then I do colon, and that's going to replace staff. That's going to be the group. And I'm going to put it into the admin group. So nobody user, admin group, file name. Um, go ahead and, and do my uh, list all here. Uh, and you can see that I've changed both of those at the same time. All right, so um, let's go ahead and go back and, and sort of change everything back to the way that it was. Um, because I've, so I've changed uh, the, the ownership. So I'm going to go ahead and pseudo chone uh, and put it back to Addy and staff, which is what it originally was. Um, we'll look at that. Right, okay, so I've changed my ownership back again and the group back again. And now, uh, remember, we added that, that plus W, so I'm going to go ahead and chmod it. Now, I'm logged in as Addy, and it's owned by Addy again, so I can actually go ahead and just do this without, without sudo now. Um, I want to, under uh, for both group and other, remove write. I want to leave that on for Addy. Um, and we can see that worked. Okay, so I went ahead and got rid of the write permission for, for both the group and other. I would also be remiss if I didn't actually mention uh, that um, we use chum chone to uh, do the the uh, group thing, but there's also a command called chgroup, which is chgrp, uh, which would just change the group. So chone lets you do the owner and the group. Chgroup is just going to be the group, same syntax that you would use, uh, just chgroup, the name of the group, and then the file or folder you wanted to change. So um, I often just seem to use it for with Chone though, so. Um, next thing I want to do here is actually I'm going to go to a my local host, uh, an installation I have of Drupal 6, um, and just sort of sort of see this in a little bit of a Drupal context. And uh, I'm going into Sites Default, right, which is where we have our settings.php file that needs to be set up. Um, and uh, so you can see uh, the default one that comes with Drupal is here, and these are just the permissions from you know my random checkout that I did. And uh, what you need to do whenever you do an installation, of course, is copy default settings.php to the regular settings.php. Now it's giving me a permission denied, and sometimes you'll see this when you're trying to do your installation, uh, you know, stuff. You get all kinds of permission errors or something. So I wanted to kind of walk through some of these. So. I'm just trying to copy it, and it's it's totally not giving it to me. Um, so again, like we looked at earlier, you can use the sudo command to help you escalate temporarily and get to where you need to be. So same as before, we're going to just do sudo, and then the command that I was trying to do uh, that didn't have permission, which is just copy. Uh, so I'll copy my settings.php. That works fine. When we come in to look at the permissions, everything's cool. The permissions are the same, but the owner is now root because I did that as sudo, which is root. So now it's owned by root rather than Addy. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead just to make everything look pretty and matching. I'm going to go ahead and, and change the ownership on this. Now I'm going to try and change the ownership to Addy. But again, remember it's owned by root. So what do I need to do? sudo chone Addy settings. And then now when I look at this, voila. OK, so now it all sort of looks the same. Uh, and I sort of have a, a place to start from. Now when I'm trying to do my installation, I might need to add write permissions. Uh, sometimes you get that, ah, we can't write to the file. So, uh, so I'm going to chmod. I want to just give everybody write permissions. So it's an A plus W. Boom. So settings is completely wide open and writable. This is not a state we normally want to leave it in. We run our installation. It's done. It says, hey, change it back. So what we want to do is chmod. Uh, and actually, we don't even, uh, Drupal by default wouldn't give write permissions on anything. So I'm going to say for everyone equal. So rather than adding or subtracting, I'm just going to say exactly what the permission should be for everybody. And it's read only. So for everybody, equal R read only on this file, and then boom, it goes ahead and, and takes care of that. So now settings.php is read only. Uh, nobody can actually write to the file, and everything's set. Uh, 
it's important stuff to sort of know and pay attention to. You don't want people to be getting in and monkeying with your settings file. Now, if I try and remove this, like if I wanted to just delete this installation, um, right, so it's asking me, yeah, permission denied. I don't have write access. I'm the owner, but I can only read it. So I only gave myself read-only access. So again, sudo rm is the only way to get rid of it. So just because I'm the owner, if I don't have write access, I still can't actually delete the file or modify the file. So I'm going to have to sudo or change the permissions using chmod. So that was a bunch of stuff. Um, again, it's sort of a good idea to just copy some stuff, play around with it, change your own permissions, change your ownership on things, and sort of get a feel for how all that stuff works so that when you need it in the real world, uh, it's not quite a stretch.